Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, I'm here today with Micah Pollock of Weldon Music Publishing, and we're going to talk to him about a lot of publishing kind of details. It's something that when I first started talking to you, I was just completely lost on <laughs> the whole publishing world. And uh, we're just going to kind of find out a little bit about him as well and just uh, hear about his story. And um, so welcome to Thank you. my Thank YouTube you. channel. Yeah, it's great to be here. Great to be here. Great to be a part. Yeah, absolutely. So why don't you go ahead and tell us a little bit about your background, actually, okay. and just, you know, what got you into music in the first place and sure. that kind of stuff. Sure. Well, I uh, grew up in the church, of course. My dad was a pastor. Uh, so as most PKs, you know, you kind of adapt and you do whatever is called upon, uh, music, cleaning, you know, it just goes, <laughs> you run the whole gamut of things as far as what you do. So during that time, just kind of grew a love for music, um, helping my parents, you know, in the churches and different things like that, that they pastored. And also my dad was an evangelist for a while. So mm -hmm. I think started singing when I like four years old. Really, yeah. So, you know, I mean, it just kind of grew from there. But, uh, and, you know, that just kind of grew with me. So then I started directing choirs and um, just different groups and things like that that I worked with. Um, See, I didn't even know this. I'm learning stuff. This yeah. is why interviews yeah. are cool. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I, you know, a long, long line of as far as being involved in church and music and different things like that. And then um, about almost 20 years ago now, my wife had lost her job and I was kind of in between church jobs at that point and we just kind of uh, decided that we needed a, a change of scenery, a change of pace or whatever and she had an aunt that lived in the Nashville area. Uh, it's kind of what brought us to Nashville oh, right. so it was, was a need for a job yeah. and when we got here this was the first time I had ever not worked for a church or for a church school right. uh, you know because I was a when we lived in Missouri, I was also the administrator over Christian school for seven years mm. and ran one of those. And uh, so when we moved here, then it's like all of a sudden you got a, the real world, you know, a secular job yeah, and all right. of that. So I, I then I kind of was one of those things for me that I wanted to still do something that was attached to the church mm. of somehow. Yeah. So I started looking for different jobs and uh, the church that we attend, First Church Nashville, uh, had a lady in there that actually worked for a Christian music company. She mm -hmm. told me about some openings. I applied and got a job. And with Brentwood Benson Music is who I actually started working with. Uh, but they were owned at that particular point in time by uh, Sony. Mm -hmm. uh, then, okay. like Sony BMG owned them. Then we were also a part of uh, Hal Leonard, who does a lot of like. Uh, work with schools and uh, different things like that. Right, yeah. um, I, I use those books to teach out of, and yeah. I use them to learn the piano. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Well, yeah. and I, and there, you know, I would I would say most people that do any kind of teaching yeah. or whatever have used Hal Leonard. You know, so they owned us, and then um, the last little stretch was we were owned by Universal Music Company. Uh, and their that were the parent company. Then we had uh, Capital Christian Music was who the I guess the daughter was you know for right. that. That's who I actually right. worked for. So you know just involved in all yeah. aspects right. connected with uh, you know the print world, the publishing world, the sales world, mm -hmm. kind of all together. Right. Um, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's cool. And that's sort of. Um, just a whole other world, you know, like at, growing up, just learning how to play music and sing and play and write songs and stuff yeah. uh, is one aspect. And then the publishing is like a whole different thing that I just never really um, learned much about. And, you know, until until we started putting songs out and then you kind of do it the wrong way. And then, yeah. <laughs> you know, and yeah. uh, with, I was with a band and uh, even with my church, I've been, you know, trying to put some music out. And mm -hmm. so you kind of just figure it out like as, yeah. nowadays you know there i feel like there's an opportunity to do uh, more kind of like do it yourself but that doesn't mean you're doing it the right way right <laughs> well it's like you said yeah. earlier though you said you know uh, i really realized i didn't know anything right. at all <laughs> yeah. and i think that's where most people land right. is you feel like you understand the music industry because most people when they think about the music industry or think solely in the realm of streaming right. like that's where everybody's mind goes right. is you know, if I can get my song out there via some kind of digital distributor, then, you know, I've done what I'm supposed to do. Right. But there's so much more, you yeah. know. Yeah. So could you talk a little bit about that? Maybe like 
um, the difference between maybe money that you get from streaming versus yeah. what the publishing actually covers. Yeah. What, you know, and as far as like the song itself, yeah, maybe. Well, first of all, I think it's important to know that publishing covers the song and the songwriter. Mm. That's a very important factor that most people don't realize. As opposed to the artist. As opposed to the artist. Right. Now, granted, a lot of times uh, what happens is you kind of have a, a connection, a cross-pollination of that because a lot of times your artist are also your songwriters. Right. Yeah. So if that happens, that's always a great thing. You know, that, yeah. uh, that's always very beneficial. You kind of double dip yeah, <laughs> a little you, bit. Yeah, you right. can. And, and so, you know, from a marketing perspective, that's great. Mm. But at the end of the day, publishing is all about the, the songwriter and the song, mm. the promotion of the song, the protection of the song, the collection for the song. It's all about that, that side of it. Right. You know, I've had people contact me before wanting, you know, to know about marketing and things like that for, their artistry mm -hmm. unfortunately that's not what publishing does right. you know okay. so i don't know if that that so, kind yeah, of no, led that, you down a ro road here so no no that's good because like i think i had no idea the difference when i first started and yeah. I, you know I, I understand that now but i think it might be helpful for people to understand that so publishing is protection for the songwriter and the song yes. Um, yes and so what can be done with that like what does that entail as far as that goes well you had mentioned the difference between streaming right. and otherwise so so streaming most you know most everybody can put their song out through a digital distributor mm -hmm. uh, now that is something that we do as well we offer that as a service as well but a lot of people do that themselves and that's mm -hmm. perfectly fine mm -hmm. But that's only a portion of the proceeds as you would say right. uh, for us there's a lot of other entities, you know, there are PROs, there are, um, you know, what mechanical. Is, sorry, PRO, what does that mean? PROs, <laughs> performance rights organizations. Okay. So that's in, in our, in the U.S., that is uh, ASCAP, BMI, and, and um, uh, well, I forget the other one. The other, well, the other one. Another one. Well, there there is, but it's it's one of those. It's an invitation only. Oh, okay. And it's so, like a higher end kind of. Deal. Yeah, and you have to be invited to it, and yeah, unfortunately, you have to do a lot and make a lot in order for right. that to happen. So. Now, um, real quick, as an CSAC, that's what it is. CSAC. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, now I have a. I don't know if it's called a number or a license or something with mm -hmm. BMI. Mm -hmm. IPI it. number. IPI number. Mm -hmm. That's what I have. Uh, and so you can basically, as an individual, I believe, you can mm -hmm. only have a, an IPO with one of those organizations. Is That's that right? Correct. Yes. Yeah. You um, have to you have to decide between one of them. Right. Now, from a publisher standpoint, we're members of everyone except for CSAC because, again, that's invitation. Right. But we're we're part of the others uh, because we can do that. Mm -hmm. So we can represent the different people who are part of BMI or maybe they're part of ASCAP. But as a writer, you have to pick one. Right. So. Okay. Yeah. And so then, uh, let's say I write a song mm -hmm. and, I, I, I have it published maybe through a company, mm -hmm. uh, such as Weldon music publishing. Uh, what, what happens if someone else wants to cover the song? Um, you know, what kind of protections are in place or, sure. you know, splits or all that stuff? Yeah. Well, just, just so most people understand a PRO, um, and, industry standard splits it's not something that we set up it's something that's industry standard automatic split uh, it's a it's kind of a 50 50 thing with a pro now most people get nervous they think oh you're taking half of my money but it's one of those things you wouldn't get it otherwise mm -hmm. i mean it, right. it's in the system it is set up for a publisher to get half mm -hmm. and for the writer to get half mm -hmm. something again i don't do right. it's just automatically there um but it in turn pays out, like, you know, uh, if you're BMI, if you're ASCAP, whichever one, but it pays directly to the songwriter once we put the song into the system. It pays directly to, we'll say Weldon in this case, right. uh, their portion of the money as well. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's kind of a trickle-down effect. And you mentioned about protection side of things. If somebody wants to record... Uh, that's where being part of a mechanical licensing organization, which we have memberships with, um, they in turn uh, take care of the licensing for you. Mm -hmm. So let's say you wanted to record my song, you would go and I would say, hey, you need to go on this website. You fill out this form. They in turn make sure they charge you according to how many copies you're making or how many streams you feel like you're going to get. And they in turn pay the songwriter. 
So the good thing is, is you have somebody that's kind of monitoring that, that's watching that to making sure that you're getting what you're supposed to get. But it's also a little bit more of a streamlined effect, if right. that makes sense. Yeah. So. Oh, that's good. So another thing, this is just like something I uh, realized when, as we were getting into it, like we always used to think about copyright, like copyright's yeah. a big thing because you don't want someone to steal your stuff. Right. But, um, and it, it is, but then I realized later is it's less likely that someone's going to say they wrote your song mm -hmm. rather than just using your song without permission. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that's where the publishing protects from people just using your song without permission. And it'll, it'll help to kind of, you know, and if they are going right. to use your song, the, mm -hmm. there's ways of doing that. And then, you know, they're, there are splits that can happen. Is that yeah. right? So if another artist wants to do yeah. your song. Well, um, yeah, I mean, it goes back to the licensing, yeah. you know, like we were talking about, because in order, like if you wrote the song, uh, somebody to do it right has to legally get an agreement signed, a license to utilize your song. Now, granted, I know you mentioned copyright. Copyright is still important right. because from a governmental standpoint or legal standpoint, if you ever had to go to court, Mm -hmm. uh, that's something that's extremely important. Now, there is a such thing called a poor man's copyright. Mm -hmm. Poor man's copyright, which means like if we today were to sit here and we were to write a song and record it, it's considered copywritten mm -hmm. because it's been recorded. Okay. It's got, you know, time, time stamped. Time stamped. Yeah, it's kind of like we, we have proof of when we did it, okay. of everything somewhere in the system. Right. But to officially do it, the governmental copyright is always the next best thing because the poor man's version is left up to a judge, basically. I mean, it really right, is. Yeah. Well, you have like, to go to court and yeah, you're yeah. still paying legal fees. Yeah, and like for right now, uh, you know, I won't divulge any major information, but right now I'm dealing with a situation where an individual hasn't been getting paid for a song that's been being recorded for several years. By other people? By oh. other people. Oh, wow. And but come to find out is when they initially put forth the governmental copyright, somebody filed it incorrectly. Oh. And so because of that, even though they have the proof that they wrote the song, it's one of those things that um, you still have to go back and correct the, correct the process. Yeah. And then wow. unfortunately, you can't go back and get money back you know from years you have to go forward yeah which wow. is kind of a it's kind of a so sticky like sad lost, situation lost like several years of potential like yeah. income wow so that's that's tough you know to have yep. lose those years potentially but it's good you know maybe correcting it now will protect them going forward you know yeah and yeah. i think that's again that's why i i can't overemphasize to people the importance of of publishing i mean yeah. it's just it's a big it's basically the business side of songwriting. Mm -hmm. If I had to, if I had to say and limit it to one particular thing, I would say it's the business side of songwriting. Right. Um, yeah. And it takes care. You know, I always tell the people that I'm working with, it lets you continue to be creative. You continue to write. You right. continue to right. produce. You continue to arrange. You continue to do all of that, and then we take care of the busy work for you. Yeah. No, um, that's that's good. Um, so why don't we talk a little bit about Weldon <clears throat> Music? Uh, publishing. This is something yeah. that I've actually, for those of you who don't know, I kind of was involved a little bit yeah. for a few years, and uh, then I I recently stepped down just because I had a lot of other things going yeah. on. Sort of one, yeah. one of my one of my many part time jobs. Yeah. So I got to, that's kind of how we got connected, and I got yeah. to work with you a little bit. And so tell me a little bit about what Well the Music uh, Publishing is about, and yeah. maybe the differences between you know, this one and maybe other publishers or sure that kind of stuff. Well, for me, uh, when we're given the opportunity, so basically I know I'd mentioned that I was, I was working with capital Christian music. Um, and unfortunately their company started downsizing. Mm. So after 17 years of being in the Christian music industry, mm my job kind of disappeared mm. and so <laughs> out of nowhere <laughs> yeah yeah so I, I had started talking with uh with brother jeremy hoffey uh, the upci music and talking about the importance of having this in place for apostolic songwriters because unfortunately we've never had that mm. and there were several people that i had talked to um, that were just what i call heritage people mm. uh, that had kind of paved the way in an apostolic yeah. movement that had wanted to see this for years, but it never happened. Mm -hmm. um, plus, for me, I, I, the, for me, it, the closer we can run to industry standards on things, 
to me that all benefits us as apostolic songwriters. It helps to legitimize what does. we're doing, you know. Hundred percent, hundred percent. So, so with Weldon, I had a big passion for you know for beginning that to give us legitimacy, mm-hmm. if you could say. I, yeah. I mean, I guess that's yeah. the right word, legitimacy. Yeah. Right. Um, but it gave us a voice in the market. Gave us a voice in um, just the music world. Right. Uh, you know, my goal and my hopes is that one day we'll compete with the biggest names out there. That's the yeah, goal. Right. But the difference is, I think, for us is I, my my real goal is the protection and not just the connection, but the protection of the songs, the connection yeah. and the monetization. You know, right. so it, it's it's always a big thing for me to make sure people are earning, even though sometimes it's pennies on the dollar. Right. It's still important. I mean, because yeah. after a while, pennies do add up. Yeah. You know, I mean, you know, you take them from here, there, whatever. So, so with Weldon, uh, I try to make sure that it's very user friendly. Like most in the industry, um, when you've given or signed your song with them, mm-hmm. uh, a lot of times it's for for life. Yeah. I mean, unfortunately, I mean right. it's just kind of one of those things. So when we started, I was determined that I wanted that to be different. Mm-hmm. So we do have terms okay. on ours, yeah. uh, so people don't feel like that they're locked they're in, trapped forever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I feel like they can't ever get something back. <laughs> now my right. goal is that you never have that need yeah. to take it out of the system. Right. I mean that's the goal. And the goal would be to that you also could kind of show like the value of what you've been been doing yeah. as right. they had their song with you. And um, that helps too, because yeah, exactly. Why would you want to take it out if it's already doing great, you know? Right. Um, and, and you know, so so for Weldon, that's one thing is the term side. Uh, terms are a big deal, but also for me is I keep the songwriter involved in any decisions that are being made. If it's a major decision, let's say I have uh, you as an artist, you come to me looking for songs, and you choose so and so song. Mm-hmm. Then I'm going to call them and I'm going to say, hey, you know, they want to record your song. How do you feel about that? You know, a lot of people don't. If they have your song signed, they're just like, okay, this is a great opportunity. And they just let them do it. Uh, I, I feel like it's a partnership, yeah. you know. And so for me to continue a partnership, even though we have, quote, unquote, the controlling rights, I don't ever want to take the songwriter out of the picture. You know, I want them to feel like that they're invested in the process because at the end of the day, it's still their song. Yeah. I tell a lot of people a lot of times for me, it's almost like we're a daycare for for a child. <laughs> right. It's it's like you go and you drop it off, and, but you want it to be cared for. I mean, you yeah. you want to be able to trust that your child is being cared for. Yeah. So oh, that's good. One cool thing that you've been doing too, in addition to just the, the getting this kind of off the ground in, in a way, is putting songwriters together and, yeah. and letting them write, and and that's like you know something that's huge. Who you know, no matter um, who you are as an artist, yeah. to write, to continue the process of writing is so important because yeah. otherwise you have nothing to nothing to pull from, and then you have right. to sing other people's songs. And um, you know, it's more beneficial if you can sing your own songs or get yeah. your songs out there uh, because it's it's you know, as an artist and as a songwriter, that's really important. I believe you know? it is, and you know, it, it's very scriptural. Yeah. Iron sharpens iron. Right. You know, yeah, it, the collaboration's huge. Like yeah. the songwriting sessions that I've been a part of, it probably uh, is has done the most as far as me finishing songs. Like I've done a lot of songs where I've started them on yeah. my own, and then they just sit there for a while because I don't have the, uh, I don't know, just the <laughs> determination to finish it right away. Right. You know, so then they'll just sit there for years, and then getting together, you kind of have that. Okay, let's let's finish this, or you know, then I can bring some of those unfinished songs, mm-hmm. and then they get done. And the collaboration has been huge help, hugely helpful for me. You know. Yeah, and I think that's the thing with all of us. I mean, I, I write as well, and I think for me, it's always about thinking, how can I do this better? Mm-hmm. Like, what can take me to the next level? Mm-hmm. And sometimes someone can push you in areas, make you think, mm-hmm. you know differently very abstractly you know you know it's just try to think because i know you you know you know we've worked with different people before because you and i've worked together (laughs) right and and you know there are certain people that really they're they're word focused Mm. like you use a word and they want to say well what's another word that we can use that says the exact same thing but that's not overused over and over and over again and they make you just think about things differently it's not just what comes the easiest is not always the best, if that makes right. sense. Right, okay, so. yeah, that's good. Yeah, it, the, everybody has their strengths, you know, like um, for me, I think one of my strengths is like 
writing a chorus or a catchy hook or something like that musically. Yeah. Um, and, and then other people like, then I, I struggle with developing the verses, you yeah, know, and then, yeah. then I get people to kind of like fill in the gaps for me yeah, <laughs> and, yeah. uh, other people, like I work with a girl, uh, Hoku shout out. She's really good with lyrics. Like yes, she just has, she is. she'll just she's have amazing. like pages and pages of text that she can pull from, you know, yeah. she'll just, it's called like free writing. She'll just write. And then you can like pull those things into a song sometimes. And it just, it's yeah. pretty cool how it can. Yeah. It, the collaboration is pretty awesome with, with, um, if, if you're a songwriter out there and I think just finding someone to write with can be really helpful to get, get stuff done. Yeah. And you know, you mentioned Hoku, yeah. another shout out. <laughs> uh, so, you know, she's one of the, she's one of the first people that kind of joined up and was all in on the collaboration kind of thing. And, um, it meant a lot to me personally because starting out, you know, no one knows who you are, no one knows what you're doing, no one knows if they can trust you, right. you know, and all of this. It's like, who is this strange guy? Why is he wanting to, you yeah. know, sign a song? Right. Why is, you know, it, so there's a lot of questions you have to answer. But then you you develop this community of people and you start right. growing that community. Yeah. But like you said, with her, uh, it's a great example of she just has pages of of content thought, of thoughts, <laughs> yeah. you know, and whether it be, you know, and, and some some other people are like this. They'll hear their pastor preach a message and they'll just jot down like different lines. And then you then you have to go back to the drawing board. Well, how can we combine these lines? How can we, right. you know, develop these yeah. lines? And then, you know, there's there's others who are real like story like mm -hmm. it like I, I know one individual we, you know we work with uh brandon another shout out mm -hmm. um he's one guy that's really big on making sure that that it's talking about the same thing from mm -hmm. front to back right like you know the third it, verse has to connect to the first verse somehow. yeah yeah but yeah. i mean it all needs to it all needs to flow it right. all needs to make sense mm -hmm. and it takes those yeah. type of people though it takes the lyricist who has just abundance yeah. of lyrics it takes the person who can combine those and say okay right. we need to complete a thought yeah. it takes an arranger who can develop a hook it takes right. you know it takes yeah. so many of those different mm -hmm. attributes mm -hmm. that's why doing it on your own is great sometimes mm -hmm. but joining with others can it just push you more yeah. refined and a better yeah. like a more well-polished product at the end of the day yeah. yeah in my opinion for sure yeah well, um, cool. I hope this is helpful. Is there anything else you want to touch on just as in the world of music and publishing? Like, well, I, I mean, there's so much to touch on, but this is kind of like kind of an overview just to give yeah. people an idea if they don't even know where to start. I would encourage this. Um, I know a lot of people are real big about tagging other songs. Uh, like oh, yeah. they'll write an original, but then like at the end, they want to tag a verse yeah. or a line right. from something else. Just make sure that everyone gets permission. Mm. Um, uh, again, another situation that I've I've had to deal with was somebody recorded a song, didn't come out yet, but then they tried to go backwards and get the permission. Well, they were denied because they already did it without. Permission. Well, this song is already mastered. Oh wow! I mean, it's oh, ready man. to go, and oh. now it's got to be redone. Wow! To take that out because they weren't granted permission. Now, granted, that doesn't happen a lot when you're right. denied. Yeah, but. It's always better to seek permission first before you finish, you know, yeah, wow. and because here's the thing. If it was your song, you'd want somebody to get permission. You'd want somebody to get a license. You'd want to be paid right. for your portion That's of that true. song. I mean, you would. And, and I think anyone out there who's doing songwriting would want that same thing. So it's not just as easy as I'm going to throw in. Uh, I know there's been this unwritten rule of if it's less than 30 seconds, mm. uh, I can use it, yeah. you know, without getting permission. Again, that comes down to, and I've done a lot of research on this. It comes down to a, a judge's opinion. Yeah, <laughs> like he can determine if you use two words, you're going to have to pay. I mean, that's he can do that. Yeah. Now, again, it, again, you may get a very lenient judge who's like, "Oh, it's just thirty seconds. Right. You know, you don't have to worry about it." Um, but there's been a lot of cases. You know, you could go back through time and history to where people used a melody or they used a whatever. And years yeah. later, people have gone back and go, I actually started that process. Right. And they've gotten big time money from yeah. things. So yeah. well, that's true. Wow. Uh, yeah, that's something that's um, 
happen a lot and yeah you kind of wonder sometimes like i wonder if they got permission for that yeah. or you know yeah. how, how that works but the right thing to do i guess would be to get the permission so you don't have to have any legal battles later right you know well, and again i go back to we if it were you you would want somebody to do that <laughs> yeah you know so exactly. i mean that that's kind of you, right. you, it's kind of like the whole whole rule golden yeah. rule do unto others you know exactly <laughs> so. yeah that's good well Micah, that's been yeah. very helpful. So where can people find out about you or Weld the Music say they uh, want to get their song published yeah. and kind of go down these proper avenues so they don't have to undo things later? So how yeah. do they get a hold of you? Uh, info at weldonmusicpublishing.com. Again, that's info at weldonmusicpublishing.com. Extremely long. I apologize. <laughs> and they can uh, follow on social as well. Social as well. Instagram and also Facebook as well. And uh yeah, feel free to email me. I'm always looking for song submissions, always reaching out for the next thing, you know, to right. try to connect people with. Yeah, and if you're a songwriter too, and yeah. maybe you're not an artist, you could also reach out because the publishing side, once again, protects the artist and, I mean, no, no, song. sorry, the publishing <laughs> protects yeah. the songwriter and the song. So yeah. if you are just, say you're not an artist, but you have a lot of songs that you've written, there are people like that yeah. who don't really want to perform their own songs. Yeah, exactly. They can contact you and then we can get these songs in, you know, the right artists. Yeah. And, yeah, well, that's, yeah, that's the goal. If the right artist does the song, the song yeah. can blow up, you know? Well, and the goal is, is the way, the way publishing, I know I'm saying additional thing, I apologize, but it's just something that come to mind. So you mentioned about the people who don't want to record it themselves. The goal for publishing is to connect a song with other artists to be recorded. Right. And so, That's true. so even if it's been recorded once or never been recorded at all, is to provide a catalog for people who who come to you saying, "Hey, I'm about to record a project. I'm looking for three songs. What do you have?" Right. And then you're able to submit a catalog to them, and it would have all of these songs recorded and maybe unrecorded that people have an option to use, to license, to use for their project. Right. So, so right now you're building your catalog. And, yeah. and another thing, I guess, here's another little plug. If you are an artist, but you don't have songs that you've written, you can yeah. also reach out That's right. and yeah. you can kind of see the songs that are already in the catalog yeah. and you could potentially perform them. And you just, um, you know, yeah. it's, it's just like anything else. You just get the rights to do it and then... Yeah. Uh, you just get a percentage and, split. Yeah. And the thing is, uh, too, people always go, I don't want to use a song that's already been recorded. Well, if you think about some of the most popular songs that are out there, yeah. um, uh, you know. I mean, it's so, there's, there's tons of artists that don't write their own songs. No, but there's songs like that have been recorded, you know, multiple times. I know Waymaker, which we've talked right, about, yeah, which is exactly. kind of like a staple yeah. song for me to talk about because it's been recorded over 60 times. Yeah. That's pretty awesome. So somebody's <laughs> getting a, you know, that writer, Sanash, is getting right. a a portion of money off of every time that's recorded and every exactly. time that's played. Yeah. So, you know, it's not a bad thing to have your song recorded yeah. multiple times. Yeah, it's always absolutely. a good thing. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah. Well, hey, thanks for talking to well, us today. Thank you for and, your time. Uh, get, get in touch with this guy yeah. and follow him on social media. And uh, I think you'll you'll be smarter because of this interview, <laughs> Lord willing. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> and if you enjoyed this uh, interview, you might want to check out this interview up here or subscribe to the channel. Yeah. And thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Sweet. All right, man. Hey, good stuff. We, we knocked her out. <laughs> we knocked her out. Man, I, uh, I hope... Uh, I think yeah. it will be, man. I, like I said, when I first heard...